Hey guys, so today I am going to be talking about something which I'm surprised I haven't spoken of earlier on this channel. It comes in the form of a recent question by someone called Perdemot, and they say, Great review. I'm a noob to Linux and don't understand the differences, if any, between Arch distros and Ubuntu ones. Can you explain thanks? Okay, so I'm going to um, sort of answer this question in two parts. Uh, the first part is what I mean when a distribution is based on another distribution. And second, the main differences between distributions based on Ubuntu and distributions based on Arch. Okay, so when I say that, um, or when it is said that a distribution is based on another distribution, um, what it usually means is um, they've taken the source code of a distribution, built on it, improved it, and then released it as their own distribution. When the distribution that they're basing their own distribution on gets a new update or a new version, they will then take that new version and then put all their improvements onto that new version and then move it on as a distribution in its own right. A good example of how this is done on the Ubuntu side of things is with Linux Mint. Every long-term support release of Ubuntu, which comes along every two years, is released. Linux Mint will pick up that source code. They'll add, you know, like their own brand of multimedia codecs and their own Mint tools and all that kind of stuff. And then they'll repackage it as the Linux Mint distro. This is often uh, a preferred way of doing things because it allows like the Linux Mint project to uh, develop the parts of an operating system that they're really passionate about and focus on sort of polishing the, uh, you know, sort of sanding off the corners, polishing their distribution in the way that they want, whilst at the, the same time still having the uh, all the sort of the development and good work that's gone into the Ubuntu distribution without actually having to, to put all that, res you know, put all the resources in again and again. This is the real beauty of open source is that we don't actually have to reinvent the wheel in the same way that they do in uh, commercial software. We can take an existing project that we consider to be really, really good, and then we can improve it further and then distribute it further. So that's effectively how it works in open source um, distributions. Now, the big difference between Ubuntu-based distributions and Arch-based distributions is that Ubuntu is what's called a scheduled release distribution and Arch is, is called a rolling release distribution. So both of them have a big advantage and both of them have a pretty big disadvantage. So Ubuntu, which is a scheduled distribution, it gets a main release every six months with a long-term support release coming in every two years. The long-term support release uh, is so that you don't have to update your operating system as regularly, but the caveat is that you have most, uh, you know, at times more out of date software in the repositories. The big additional benefit for this is that it's actually considered more stable, and once you fix an error in the Ubuntu uh, long term support release, you don't have to uh, come across the error again, if at all, until the next release in another two to five years time, depending on when you, when you decide to upgrade and when support runs out. Now, on the other side of the fence is rolling releases, and Arch is a rolling release. This means that you install one version of your distribution, one version of Arch, and it gets updated continuously over time with no end of life. It means you just keep updating and keep updating and keep updating and keep updating. Um, and if at any point your system then completely breaks, that's when you start again, that's when you start off with a fresh install. Uh, but that being said, I run Manjaro Linux and I have yet to have a system, like I've yet to, to have an upgrade completely break on me. And generally speaking, when it comes to rolling releases and their upgrades, they're certainly a lot better and a lot more stable nowadays than they were several years ago. So a lot of people as a result of this have, dis have, have gravitated towards using rolling release distributions because the big benefit of rolling release distributions is that they have more up-to-date software. See, with uh, Ubuntu, they release all of their operating system and software repositories all as one. So all of the software that is associated with Ubuntu gets an upgrade every six months or every two years on a long-term support release, whereas Arch Linux, you get the upgrades as and when they become available and then pass the testing process, which means that you can get newer versions of, of software as they become available. This can be particularly useful if you work in multimedia because many of you may have noticed there are some pretty um, sizable leaps being made in the open source world in regards to multimedia 
and you may very well want to be uh, on the receiving end of the great new software as it becomes available. I certainly know I do, and that's why I choose to use Manjaro Linux. However, of course, when you're updating to the latest version of software as it becomes available, even with a matured testing process, there is still the possibility that this version of, of a piece of software over here isn't necessarily compatible with the version of uh, a dependency of another piece of software over here, and you can often get conflicts in that department when um, the when, when one piece of software that's designed to work with another piece of software doesn't because one piece of software has just had a big upgrade. Um, scheduled releases specifically test so that the software plays nicely together. Whereas they try and do this with rolling releases, it often is um, not possible to reconcile all the conflicts and all the differences uh, because a lot of that then falls directly onto the developers of the application. Now with that said, rolling releases I've found, although bugs do appear in them perhaps more frequently than with your standard um, scheduled release. They also get patched a lot quicker as well. So if you can, if you're pretty good at troubleshooting, if you're pretty good at, if you know your system quite well and you're good at working through bugs and errors, a rolling release can really benefit you if you're looking for the latest and greatest software. If you're looking to install something uh, on maybe a relative or friend's PC and just sort of let them have at it, then something like Linux Mint or a long-term support release of Ubuntu uh, could be particularly useful because not only is it just a little bit more on the stable and predictable side, um, but also because it's not as fast moving, that means you know that new errors won't arise until a big update. So it's, again, it's very much um, whether or not you want a scheduled release or a rolling release depends very much on your on, on what you desire out of your applications and how badly you need the latest and greatest open source applications. Like I say, because I do a lot with multimedia, the latest and greatest version of open broadcaster software and simple screen recorder and Audacity and all that kind of stuff, you know, it makes a lot of sense to have the latest versions of those. So I tend to go for rolling releases based on Arch. Uh, Arch and Ubuntu are both seasoned Linux distributions. They've both been around for quite some time now, so they've got like established communities and so forth. However, I also think it's worth bearing in mind that distributions based on Ubuntu and Arch have their own communities and they vary quite a lot. Now, there is probably one sizable difference that is definitely worth mentioning in this video, uh, particularly between Ubuntu and Arch, and that's the kind of user that each distribution is designed for. Ubuntu from its very beginnings have always tried to make a universal Linux distribution, a distribution that would work on as many computers as possible in as many different languages uh, as possible and for people of varying skill sets of, uh, as possible. And whether or not we can sort of discuss to what extent they've actually achieved this goal, they've certainly made huge leaps and bounds in regards to developing Linux OSs in general and that's why so many Linux OSs are based on Ubuntu. Uh, it, you know, it is a pretty fine distribution in, in, in my opinion uh, sort of over over you know in terms of a long term arc of it now with arch it again is still a very developed distribution but it is one that is clearly aimed at more experienced linux users i wouldn't advise arch as a, a first distribution for anyone um, going into linux uh, in fact, I wouldn't recommend an Arch-based distribution for anyone going into Linux just yet. I can imagine that one day Manjaro or Antergos might reach a point where I would feel comfortable just getting someone who's very, you know, getting someone who's used to using Windows, um, sitting down and, and introducing them to the operating system without any major problems. However, I feel that that day is a few years off, whereas with Ubuntu and other Ubuntu-based distributions like Linux Mint and Elementary, and even like the um, LXDE variant Lubuntu, I've actually taken these distributions and installed them onto friends and family's laptops, and they have had very few problems actually learning how to use it and with the stability of the software. And uh, so I, I would say that just off the bat, in its most you know in, in its most simplistic terms, uh, Ubuntu-based distributions are probably likely to be more polished and more user-friendly, whereas Arch-based distributions are likely to require a little more know-how to to get them working and to maintain them and to upgrade them. So there are some pretty sizable differences between Ubuntu-based distributions and Arch-based distributions. Um, Ubuntu, I, I'm going to say they're more stable, but there's a lot more nuance to that. They tend to be easier to use. The communities tend to be a little bit more open towards newbies, but that being said, there are plenty of Arch-based dist Arch distributions that are newbie-friendly, in terms of their community at least anyway. 
Um, and of course, um, Ubuntu distributions require significantly less maintenance, especially when things go wrong, whereas Arch-based and rolling release-based distributions are uh, they require a little bit more paying attention to and a little bit more work. Of course, um, this expl explanation pales into a practical demonstration, so I would advise anyone who's really interested in the, uh, you know, in a more in-depth analysis, just to fire up a virtual machine and run Arch Linux, run Ubuntu, um, and just sort of check out the differences side by side for themselves. Um, so that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any thoughts on Ubuntu and Arch-based distributions, please leave them down in the comment section below. I'm sure I've missed off a great deal out of this video. This is just a quick um, answer to a question that was left earlier today, and I thought I might get a video out for it just because I can. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. If I don't answer them, I apologize. It's um, probably because either I've answered them recently before, or it's because it, I just don't feel qualified to answer the question. Sometimes you guys ask me some really advanced questions that I'm just not qualified to answer answer so uh, but feel free to ask um, regardless and if I know and if I can help I will um, try my best thanks very much for watching um, until next time I've been Chris Weir and you've been awesome take care now